Deputy Secretary Work will now make a statement. Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. First of all, I'd like to express my deepest condolences and those of Secretary Hagels and the entire American people to the families who lost their loved ones in the mudslide in Hiroshima. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all of those who have been impacted by this awful tragedy. It has been a very, very big pleasure for me uh, to be here in Japan and to be able to meet today with Vice Minister Takeda. We had a very productive and uh, positive meeting. And I look forward uh, later today to meeting with Vice Minister uh, Kishi and tomorrow with Minister of Defense Onodera. Both Vice Min Minister Takeda and I agree that the U.S.-Japan alliance continues to be strong. We believe it's the cornerstone of peace and stability in the Asia-Pacific region and a critical part of the U.S. rebalance to this region. The Asia-Pacific rebalance, and particularly our alliances and partnerships, are the highest priority for President Obama and Secretary Hagel, myself, and the entire Department of Defense. Shortly after I took this position, Secretary Hagel asked me to lead the implementation of our posture enhancements throughout Asia. And to that end, I've just completed visits to Guam and South Korea, where I saw firsthand the significant progress that has been made to bolster U.S. force posture in the Asia-Pacific region. In Guam, I saw many of the Japanese-funded projects that are helping us to build new infrastructure there to facilitate the relocation of Marines from Okinawa and to continue to transform the island to an important strategic hub for the Asia-Pacific. In my meeting with Vice Minister Takeda, I emphasized the central role that Japan plays in our rebalance and the significant progress that we have made to transform our alliance and realign U.S. forces in Japan so that together we can more effectively address emerging security challenges. To that end, Vice Minister Takeda and I discussed the revision of the bilateral defense guidelines, which are critical to our efforts to build a more balanced and effective alliance. We strongly welcome Japan's recent cabinet decision permitting collective self-defense, which should enable an ambitious and substantive revision to the guidelines that allows Japan to play a larger role in our alliance and to contribute to regional and global security. We also discussed the significant progress that has been made in realigning U.S. forces in Japan so that we can establish a force posture that is geographically distributed throughout the region, operationally resilient, and politically sustainable over the long term. Tomorrow I have the opportunity to visit the Marine Corps Air Station in Iwakuni, and there I think I will witness much of the progress firsthand, including the recent relocation of KC-130s refueling aircraft from Okinawa and the projects that are underway there to facilitate the relocation of Carrier Air Wing 5 from Tokyo area in 2017. Iwakuni is a critical component of our realignment and the progress we have made there is nothing short of astonishing to me. Uh, I think you know I was the Under Secretary of the Navy in 2009 to 2013 and the progress we have made since then is very gratifying. I also express my appreciation for Japan's efforts to move forward on the construction of the Fatima Replacement Facility Airfield. This is a major accomplishment that opens the way for us to make substantial progress in the realignment of U.S. forces on Okinawa. Over the next several years, we will deploy a number of advanced U.S. capabilities to Japan to enhance our posture and to maintain regional deterrence, including the first overseas deployment of the Marine Corps F-35 in 2017. We have also made rapid progress in constructing the second Tipi-2 radar site, which will be completed by the end of this year. We appreciate very, very much Japan's strong support and close coordination during this entire progress. The U.S. Navy is also moving forward with, the plans, with plans to deploy two additional ballistic missile defense ships in Yokosuka by 2017, which will greatly enhance our alliance ballistic missile defense capability. We also welcome Japan's new arm export, po export policy <clears throat> and the passage of the Secrets Protection Act, both of which we believe will enhance defense industrial cooperation with the United States and other partner region, uh, uh, nations in the region, 
especially Australia. This will lead to lower costs, we believe, better capabilities, and enhanced operational cooperation that will promote security and stability in the Asia-Pacific region. The United States cannot stress more its appreciation for Japan's important role as a contributor to peace and prosperity in this important region and the rest of the world, and we are steadfast in our commitment to Japan's security. I very much look forward to working with Minister Takeda in the coming months as we further deepen this very important alliance. Thank you. はい、続きまして代表質問にお知らせさせていただきます。え、お時間の都合上質問は日米、え、それぞれ一問ずつとさせていただきます。質問者は所属および氏名をおっしゃった後、前方のスタンドマイクでご質問をお願いいたします。初
I can tell you that the momentum of the uh, construction and the momentum of the move there is really starting to pick up. So overall, I'm extremely, extremely uh, enthusiastic about the direction of things. Uh, as far as the relocation or, uh, of, or the Saga Airport issue, I'd like to refrain from going into the specifics also, uh, uh, as Minister Takeda said. But as to confirmed in our 2 plus 2 agreement in 2013, the Fatima replacement facility is the only solution that avoids the continued use of Air Force, Marine Corps Air Force Station Fatima. And because of that, uh, that is why I'm so excited about the progress. As a general principle, I committed uh, uh, to Vice Minister Takeda that we will explore all mitigation impacts uh, and we will continue to do so. Uh, but the long-term solution is the uh, to my replacement facility and I'm so very happy with the progress that, our, uh, that we have been made, made in that regard. As far as the defense guidelines go, this doesn't happen very often. The last time we revised the defense guidelines were in 1997. So we believe that this is an inflection point for our alliance, that by taking the time and doing the, uh, uh, by doing a good job on the defense guidelines, we will strengthen an alliance that already uh, is the cornerstone of our security arrangements in the Asia Pacific region. And we believe it will lead over the long term to a safe, prosperous, and secure Asia Pacific region. Now we will take a question from Associated Press. I'm Maria Miguchi of the Associated Press. And I would like to ask uh, both uh, Vice Minister Takeda and uh, Deputy Minister uh, Work, um, how does um, Japan's um, recent changes in defense policies uh, to play, uh, to be able to play a greater uh, a defense role internationally, um, how, how does it affect um, U.S. Um, and Japanese uh, security policies in the region, um, particularly in relations to um, Japan-U.S. bilateral uh, alliance, and also one uh, including a trilateral framework, including uh, South Korea, um, for, for instance, in the area of missile defense and other uh, strategies. Thank you. Mr. Work, please. Well, first of all, the U.S. government welcomes uh, the collective self-defense um, initiatives started by the government of Japan. As I said, from our perspective, the rebalance to Asia from the U United States perspective is all about creating a safe, secure, and prosperous Asia-Pacific region. A lot of people seem to think that it is all about military uh, instruments, but it's not. It's about strengthening our alliances so that we maintain peace and security in the region. And it's about fostering, I mean, prosperity throughout the region, which is why the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, are, is so important as part of the rebalance. So the fact that the collective self-defense has, uh, has been debated and uh, been approved here in Japan, leading to a renegotiation or a relook at the guidelines is what we believe is really going to provide security for the region for a long time. As I told the Vice Minister, I think 10 years from now, people will look back to this very time and say this was one of these signature things that allowed peace and prosperity and a secure Asia Pacific region uh, to grow and thrive. In terms of the trilateral uh, aspects, there's another alliance that we very much value, and that is the alliance with South Korea. Both of our, these alliances help maintain peace and security uh, in Northeast Asia and throughout the region. The more that we can exchange information among our three countries, the better it is for both of our alliances and for peace and prosperity in the region. So we welcome all different types of ways to further this trilateral discussion, and we think ballistic missile defense is a very, very good place to start because of the common threat that we face, specifically from North Korea. Uh, 
、えー、日本の安全保障政策にの変化についてのご質問もありましたあの取り巻く安全保障環境が厳しさを増している状況の中においては当然我が国としてもそれに順応した安全保障政策の転換というものが求められると思っておりますアジア太平洋地域の平和と安定これを実現するためには当然のごとく日米同盟をさらに強化するということが最大のポイントになってくると思いますそれは信頼関係の構築でありさまざまな情報を共有するという多分野にわたってそれがなされるものであると思いますけれども我が国だけの抑止力のみならず日米同盟としての抑止力というものが加わって初めてこの地域の平和と安定が実現されるものというふうに考えているわけであります今日はあの副長官とさまざまな分野について議論を交わしましたけれども、えー、日本の安全保障政策につきましては大変の評価もいただいておりますし、えー、普天間の問題沖縄の負担軽減の問題とかなり前向きな議論も今日は果たすことができたわけであります。外して言うならば今後さらに緊密に連携を取りながら関係諸国も含めた上で緊密な連携を取りながら双方の力を合わせてこの地域の平和と安定に力を発揮していこうというそうした統一の意見が出されたわけであります。それではこれで共同記者会見を終了させていただきます。えー、武田防衛副大臣、我が国防副長官、ご退場をください。記者の方々におかれては、しばらくそのままでお待ちいただきたいと思います。